Okay, uh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, can you please uh, introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, my name is V. I completed my graduation uh, from Deva University and uh, in 2023. And directly I, I got placed uh, in XYZ company. And there again, we got transition to service. Now we have to give interview to get the better project. So I got into the service now. And in that, my first project was Motiva Migration, where we have created a catalogs for uh, provisioning of Azure and AWS. So we have created a catalog and we have integrated with the uh, using Terraform with ServiceNow uh, cloud platform. So after that, I have worked on uh, uh, catalogs where we have created 150 plus catalogs and we used to get the LLD. So based on that low level design document, we have to create uh, catalogs. And right now, currently, I'm working in Lufthansa for like 0.5 and also I'm working on 0.5 open source project. And my shift, my team is shifting totally to open source project. And that's why I'm looking for service now opportunity. Thank okay, you. Great. OK, so when you say 150 service catalog, what was the logic behind? Like, uh, tell me uh, these server storage and network. So what was the background? So the background was based on the, the CMDB uh, relationship. So we used to give the user friendly catalog where the user used to fill the form. And based on that, the network storage used to get populate, uh, populated based on the relation. So you are fetching the details from CMDB on your catalog form? Yes. Okay. Can you give me one example in CMDB where you see three level relationship? Three level relation. You know what is a three level relationship? Uh, no, I'm not sure. Parent, child, then child, something like that. Like server, in server we have something deployed and then application, you know, that type of relationships. You have any idea? Uh, not now, sir. <clears throat> you know what is CMDB? Yeah, it is a... Uh... Configuration, uh, configuration management database where we used to, uh, where we can see the relation between the tables. Okay, and what is stored in these uh, tables? Store, it will store the data like we have, uh, like we, any record we can take, uh, we have that server or network. So we have computers, asset management. So these we can see in CMDB. So how we are populating this data? We can populate in many ways, like we have client script and script include to populate data. No, no, that is okay. But from where this data is coming? This is this data belongs to what? <clears throat> I didn't understand. Okay, so the a CMDB is a kind of you said table, right? And in yeah. that we have data with respect to servers and all. So yes. from where, uh, who is populating this data? Either we can import the data or we can create data. Okay. Okay, tell me about uh, ITSM, any example of ITSM which you have used or created from scratch? Uh, I can give, in ITSM, I can give incident example. So for example, there is an, any unplanned interruption. So uh, the user is not able to create email. And uh, so for that, we have created a uh, incident. So first step will be identification. We need to identify. And then we are going to create an incident. And then we are going to categorize whether the incident is hardware related or software in, uh, related. And after that, we'll get the option of assignment. So we need to assign to a person who is going to work on incident. And then the inv inv investigation will start. And after that, we have resol uh, resolution and then closure. So this is a one example. Other we have problem change. So basically it is like we are uh, giving, providing services to the customer, IT services. Okay. Do you know what is an outage? If something breaks in production, that is outage. Yes, yes. Give me one example. <clears throat> if something breaks, can we elaborate that? So uh, something, have, something breaks. It's, yeah. Suppose you have created one uh, catalog item and you moved okay. it to production. 
and then you see that uh, uh, one of the field in that catalog item is not working. Will you call it as outage? Uh, yeah, I can call it because for some user it won't be visible, right? Uh -huh. So people are facing issues and we need to fix. So we are going to debug the issue. We are going to understand maybe the scope difference. Maybe the when we are push, uh, pushing the data to the production, there will be a scope dif uh, difference or the roles, ACLs. Maybe there's a rule re a re a restriction so we can check. Okay, but this is not an outage. Outage is something uh, when there is a huge impact. Okay, so suppose okay. Uh, uh, some network is down or one very critical form is not working. So that is an outage which has huge impact. The example which okay. I have shared here is does not have a huge impact. It is not stopping people to work because it is not an outage. Okay, so just clear this after the call. Okay, what is an outage? Yes. Outage is different from an incident. Okay. So <clears throat> you worked on uh, workflows or flow designer? I have worked on workflows. So have and flow designer flow also designer? have worked on. Yeah, both I have worked on. So what is the major difference between these two? In uh, uh, flow designer, we can have this uh, spokes so we can add the like for example if incident created and i, I wanted to send the notification to the, to the team so we can use uh, pre built actions uh, spokes but workflow we don't have this option and there is a difference like here we can drag and drop and there we have to give a proper structure in workflow okay can you give me the difference between i waas p waas and s waas uh, yeah, so software as a service, uh, these are the cloud services. So software as a service, like the user doesn't need to do anything. They have to just use that software. For example, uh, we are using Gmail or Outlook. Mm -hmm. So let's say platform as a service. So in platform as a service, the user knows how to do code, but he doesn't have that platform. So for example, I wanted to deploy a Python app to the Azure app. Then they are going to take care of that platform. And in infrastructure as a service, we do have a platform. We do have our website, but we don't know the hosting, networking, and storage. So from infrastructure, uh, we they are going to provide this runtime uh, networking storage. OK, right. So what is the difference between uh, a business rule and a script include? Both are run in server side, but uh, the script include doesn't have that uh, function like we have that in business rule after, before, async, and display. And script include can be called in business rule and client script. Okay. So it won't work alone. So we need to call that script include to the business rule to work it or client script. So do you see any benefit in using uh, script include? Uh, yes, so for example, if we wanted to fetch the detail from the server, that time we need business rule and uh, script include. No, no, I'm asking uh, in which <laughs> case you use business rule and in which case you use uh, script include. Give me one scenario. Uh, for business rule, I will use if I wanted to validate something, like I can use before business rule, and if I wanted to populate some data, I can use after business rule. For script okay. include, if I wanted to uh, fetch some details from the user, and based on that, I wanted to populate other field. Okay. So what you will use? Which class you will use there? Which Glide class you will use? I can, uh, for if I wanted to populate some data in particular table, I can use Glide record to that table incident. Okay, and anywhere in this you use uh, Glide Ajax? Uh, Glide Ajax we used in uh, to call server side to client script. So in client script we use Glide Ajax. Okay, to call to call business rule or script include. Uh, to call uh, business rule. Are you sure? Please check it. Okay, after the call. Okay. Where yeah. we use uh, script include and where we use business tool. This is also one of the yeah. common question to get it cleared. Yeah. 
Tell me about integration. What have you done in integration till now? So in integration, I have used REST API also. And uh, I also learned about integration hub, but I didn't use much. But in REST API, we have used post, uh, patch, put, and delete methods. OK. Where you have used it? Uh, I have used in this uh, Postman also I've used for open source project. In service now, have you used it anywhere? <laughs> yeah, in service now I have used uh, for this uh, Azure and AWS catalog. So what was the process? Tell me. So we used to pass the. <laughs> One second. No problem. So we used to pass the value. Can I drink water? Sure, sure, sure. Take your time. <laughs> Relax, OK? This is a walk for you. Just relax. Uh, so I have used the uh, REST APIs uh, for fetching the details. Like for example, I wanted to insert data in the incident. So I will mm -hmm. use post. And if I wanted to fetch the details, I will use get. Okay. So which one is better? Have you used anything else? Like, uh, let's say I want to add data in incident table. What all ways I have? When you said uh, you can use REST API, right? Apart from mm -hmm. REST API, what all ways I have to uh, update data in incident or upload uh, data in incident use, table? We can use transform map also Okay. to import data. And also we can use uh, scripts also to use. Uh, for example, we I wanted to create one UI action button. Once I will cl uh, click on that, it will create an incident. Okay, okay, good. Okay, uh, type of client script, you know? Uh, yeah, we have four types of client script. Uh, on load, on change, and on submit, mm -hmm. on edit cell. Have you used on edit cell? No, no, I haven't used, but I, but I can explain. Like for example, uh, through the list view, I wanted to edit date. So okay. I will uh, add a validation that you can't add past date. Okay, okay. And uh, when you say you worked on this uh, 150 plus catalog, how many workflows yeah. you have created in this? I have created almost 20 catalogs, but uh, we together, like full team, we have worked on 50, 150 plus. Okay, so he, each catalog item has its own workflow? Few we have reused and few has own. Okay, you know what is a sub workflow? Uh, not sure. Any idea what it could sub be? Workflow, it will come inside flow designer. Oh, that is a sub flow. Okay, so workflow, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Any other thing apart from ITSM you have worked on? Uh, other models, my majorly, uh, I have majorly worked on ITSM. Other than that, I didn't explore. What do you want to, uh, you know, do? Which is like ITSM is okay, but apart from ITSM, what is in your mind you want to start next? I wanted to start ITOM actually. I wanted to learn about discovery okay. and I wanted to get a deep knowledge about the CMDB relations and all. Okay. So, what is your plan? How you are going to do that? Uh, I'm going to learn, I'm learning still, and every day I used to try to learn something new in service now. Also, they are using so many things like Gen AI in their uh, latest version. So we can just prompt and we can, you know, uh, the workflow will be created based on that. So I wanted to explore Gen AI as well. So I'm learning from courses, different courses. Okay, good. Uh, so I'm done with the discussion. Any questions you have? Uh, can you give me a feedback? Yes, you have to, you know, get foundation knowledge first okay for all these okay. uh, basics of service now business role script include this is a must here okay based okay. on that only you will be able to you know suggest or make solutions until mm -hmm. unless your concepts are not clear it's not it's not you know 
possible to go ahead because these ITSM concepts will be there for every module. Okay. Wherever you go, whichever module you use, you need to understand like where you have to write business rule, where you have to write script include, why, and all these things. Okay. So make sure your mm -hmm. service now scripting and admin part is crystal clear. Okay. I see if there is some lacking in that. Okay. So get mm -hmm. practical knowledge. Practical exposure sure. is very, very important. Okay. Mm -hmm. Get a PDI and do all this practice and everything. All cases are there. Mm -hmm. You just have to practice it and then you will be able to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. apart from ITSM, if you want to learn ITOM, okay, that's mm -hmm. a good move. But uh, first clear basics of what is ITOM, what is networking kind of thing which is used in ITOM. Okay, what are servers, mm -hmm. what are... Uh, this storage, what is application? So you, your those basics should be clear before moving into okay. item. Okay, so that mm -hmm. when once you deal with discovery, you will be able to understand logically and functionally. So this is what mm -hmm. I can say at this moment. Okay, and mm -hmm. all the very best from my side. Thank you so much for giving okay. this opportunity. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.